Hey guys, so here we are, another day, another part of the build. We're beginning to get the walls prepped to put the file on, on and uh, just starting to get some compartments cut out and whatnot ready for it. So uh, I'll just show you what we're doing now. All right, so here we have the passenger side wall on the ground and um, you can see we've got the front window cut out, the rear window. We cut a small portion out to know where the uh, generator compartment is. We're not exactly sure how big this is gonna end up being, so we just did the smaller part as a pilot hole. And then we have these uh, main seams here where the lawn board comes together, and uh, we just got it sanded down and uh, to try to keep it as smooth as possible on the transition between the two. It's pretty smooth. And then we got the same over here, and we're about to lay some bondo across this one for just a final sealant for a nice level wall. Once the file line goes on, so that's where we're at on that. And then on this one up here, you can see we sanded this down to uh, the curvature that we wanted on it. Here we are continuing the wall build and prep for the phylon. It's near ready to start adhering the phylon and cutting it out to the shape of the walls. We have the driver's side wall behind me, uh, small rough cut-ins for the doors, uh, water heater, that type of stuff, windows, and then those will be final cut once they're ready to go in. As you can hear, of course, we're in Florida and it's getting dark out and ready to rain, but um, I'm just showing you where we're at on this. On here, we have this one ready for the file on as well. We have the door cut, and I'll switch over to the other video screen so I can show you a close up. So here is our passenger side wall. You can see we've got the lawn board down. It's all been polyurethane. Good luck. There's more, more Florida Thunder. Here we are on the passenger side wall. It's all been polyurethane, uh, windows cut, door cut, window, um, rough cut in for generator compartment. And then uh, you can see where we had the seams here of the lawn board. We sanded those down, got them really level, bondoed, sanded, polyurethane. So those are nice and strong. We don't want any um, uneven edges when the phylon lays. Hey guys. So here we are on the day that we're applying the phylon to one of the wall sides. So basically what we're doing right now is we just came through with the belt sander and uh, sanded down the entire wall just to give some better mechanical adhesion for the phylon and the uh, adhesive we're using. And we're going to lay it down and we got a hundred pound linoleum roller we're going to use to get good, adequate, even adhesion. And then once the phylon is down, we've got some plywood we're gonna lay over all top of it and just get a whole bunch of weight distributed all over the wall and uh, then let it dry for a few days and then do the other wall. So that's where we're at.
So you can see this mess that's now behind me. Uh, we've applied the walls, everything went down pretty well. And then we roll it with the 100 pound linoleum roller. And then we put plywood over all of it and just basically put as much weight as we could come up with on the plywood for it to cure for a few days. So you can see there's all kinds of weight on there. Hey guys, so for the last part of this video, I figured I would just do a commentary to bring everyone up to date. Spoiler alert, if you made it to this point, you're probably wondering how the walls came out. If you follow my Instagram, you probably already know. They did not come out very well. The main issues that we could see with the results, which I don't even really have any pictures other than this one. So you can look and see that the main um, joints, it's hard to see in the photo, but where the lawn boards came together are very, very heavily visible behind the phylon. And before the phylon went down, the joints, as you saw, were very smooth. They were bonded, filled, sanded, polyurethane, and all of that. So we had those uh, joints very visible, far too visible for um, my dad and I to be comfortable with or comfortable with putting our name on. So as soon as we saw this, we also saw there was um, bumps kind of all over the phylon on the walls and it did not look well at all. So the adhesive was not yet fully cured when we saw this. So we jumped into work mode really fast and began getting the phylon off to try to save it um, before the adhesive was fully cured. So we were able to get it off and then uh, the next few days were spent um, with some, some cussing, no crying, some anger, some life confusion, just kidding. But uh, we got all the wood sanded back down to the lawn. We got the phylon off of it and uh, it's ready for round two. But what went wrong, um, I have two theories. My dad and I have two theories, I should say. One would be that we used the this adhesive. It's by Bostic. It's a multi-grip, like a mastic. Um, it's this right here. I'll show you in a picture. It's not cheap stuff, but it's very good stuff. It's very sticky. We actually did a few test runs with this adhesive before using it, and we were happy with the results, but unfortunately, I think in the test runs we did, we used too small of a portion um, of a sample, and it was too small to show us that it was going to leave waves and whatnot. And I believe now after seeing the results that the mastic shrinks when it's curing and in the joints it somehow got down in there and shrunk into those making the joints highly visible and i think error number two was using the laminate roller the hundred pound laminate roller so not only was this roller um obviously very heavy it was 100 pounds but it was 100 pounds divided amongst three roller wheel weights which you can see in the time lapse uh, me pushing it back and forth and uh, obviously each of these weights is like 33 pounds or whatever. And I believe, I mean, we covered the entire wall multi, multiple times I rolled over it. And perhaps while we were doing that, um, we had uneven compression of the adhesive underneath the phylon and some got pressed down more than others or whatever. Um, the funny part is at the end of the rolling, uh, if you pause the video or I'll attach a photo right here, you can see that the phylon looks great. There's no visible turbulence or waves in it whatsoever. But it wasn't until uh, like two days later that you could see uh, all of the turbulence and whatnot, which would obviously imply that this occurred during um, the cu curing of the mastic. So I think for round two, what we're gonna do is obviously we're going over the walls again uh, filling holes and making sure they're as straight as possible and then we'll probably be be uh, using a type of contact cement I've talked to 3m I've talked to the manufacturers of the file on material I have googled everything I can find about it from other people but unfortunately not many people have done these types of projects due to the the size of it um, 
So it's looking like we'll be using like a 3M. I've seen a few ki kinds. Uh, 1357 is one of them. Uh, another one I believe is like a 54 or 5200. It's a marine type of spray on contact adhesive. You'll spray the one side of the phylon and then you also spray the wall. You let both of them cure until they're a bit tacky and then put them together. And once they're together, I mean, they're on there really well. So you have to get it right the first try. I see people do it. They wait to cut their wall out until it's already adhered so that they don't have to worry about lining things up properly. Um, in comparison to the way we did it with the mastic, we pre-cut the wall, but luckily we had a little play in it once we laid it down and we were able to get everything lined up really well. But um, we're here, we're planning the next step. We're uh, ready to try attempt two on the wall build with, like I said, likely a 3M contact adhesive and hopefully that gives better results. So stay tuned in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Unfortunately, it didn't have an awesome ending of a beautiful wall behind me, but when you're doing this type of stuff and um, we're not professionals by any means, so stuff can happen and we're still having fun. We're learning a lot. We're having a good time and hopefully um, everyone appreciates this video and maybe some people learn some stuff or whatever, what to do, what to not do. And if you like my videos, I appreciate it. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, motivate me to keep making these. And thanks a lot. Follow us at oddcouple4x4 here on YouTube or over on Instagram. And thanks a lot. See you guys.